Chick again and I am here to give you kind of another random video because I'm in between um, like TBRs and wrap ups right now so here's a rando for you. Um, this is going to be um, small town vibes as you um, I have some like pretty random ones. These are ones that have been on my shelf for a long time. I haven't read any recently that gave me like the small town vibe feeling so these are kind of older ones but they're goodies so here we go so I'm gonna start with the paranormal ones first so I guess if you don't enjoy paranormal books then you can like skip ahead but the first two that I'm gonna talk about I only have like two paranormal small town vibe books they are um well this one they're both series but like my desk would be full of these books if I got them all out so I'm not gonna do that plus I don't have all of them here so um the first one is the Sookie Stackhouse series this is not book one um I believe that's at my mom's house somewhere this is the Sookie Stackhouse series which is set in um Shreveport slash Bonton Louisiana um so this is obviously a paranormal um mystery i believe it is called yes um and these are by charlene harris these are really really good they are not for children at all um although i read several at 16. um but these are really really good they follow sookie stackhouse who is um yeah she's a telepath so she can hear people's thoughts which is really cool except she doesn't think it is because it's really annoying like she knows what everyone is thinking including like the creeps who come into her work and like hit on her and like they're she also like knows what all her friends are really thinking she knows what like her grandma and her boss are thinking and sometimes that's really disturbing like sometimes you shouldn't hear what people are thinking they need to keep that stuff to themselves but she meets um someone she can't hear their thoughts and it is Bill, who is um, a vampire. Vampires have just like come out to the world and um, announced that they are there. And um, so they're like slowly starting to like come out into the world as like and like tell people what they are um, and like start to be accepted, kind of. Like there's obviously a stigma because people are like, what? And um, so like other like paranormal creatures are also starting to come out of the woodwork it's like hey we're real too but she's discovered that she can't always read um paranormal beings thoughts like I think her boss is a shapeshifter so like his thoughts are a little fuzzy so she can't really read his thoughts I think unless she like touches him um and then like she can't read Bill's thoughts at all um if I recall correctly and she can't read other vampires thoughts at all either so it's just really interesting but she slowly starts to realize that she can use um her ability to like help people so like she slowly starts to um like listen to like killers thoughts or like different um like thieves and like people who are being accused of something to like help tell if they are lying or not so uh yeah these are really good but th it is set in like a small town so small town vibes like it's kind of i like the books better than the show because they're like cozy mystery with a bit of gore but like the show is just like really graphic and honestly quite scary so i liked these better um, than the show. These were like cozy mystery vibes with like a little bit of gore. So yeah, I enjoy these quite a lot. I still need to finish the series. So hopefully I can do that this year. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Vampire Kisses series by um, Ellen Schreiber. Schreiber. Um, these are oldies but goodies. Um, they're really short too, like they're like 200 pages tops. This is the third book in the series, which is The Coffin Club, but I believe there are five books and we follow Raven, who is um, 
like a teenager growing up in a super super small town she is goth and she is the only goth kid in the entire town for like the longest time and then this like family shows up and um they're kind of goth too and so she's obviously like very intrigued and very attracted to the boy who is um you know the family's only son and um it turns out he is they are vampires so like this was like at the height of twilight so makes sense um but yeah i i thought these were really good they were like teen smut if you will like prior to sarah j moss um these were really good i would read like one book in an afternoon and then be waiting for months for the next one to come out so these were really really good um like I don't know what it was about it like it was the small town vibes it was like the angsty teen thing no one understood her she was like constantly trying to get her parents to buy like these ridiculous things for the house like I think she wanted like a Hello Kitty toaster and they were like no <laughs> like plus like the super like kind of sexy vampire vibes so yeah I liked vampires a lot um as a teenager still kind of do so small town vibes still paranormal vampires Sookie Stackhouse has vampires also Sookie Stackhouse has shapeshifters and witches and like where beings like not just wolves but like other where people so I'm not sure what the correct term is for that anymore but anyway moving on to the next book before this video is forever long um these are not paranormal this is the Joanne Fluke series that's really shiny um it's the Joanne Fluke series so this is set in I don't even remember what town this is but it's basically like small town um Montana I think or Wisconsin I think it's Montana but Hannah Swinson is the main character and she seems to always be in the wrong place at the or like the right place at the wrong time like it's never good she's constantly like like finding dead bodies running into murderers like it's it's not good but she's okay and she's surprisingly good at solving mysteries even though her like business that she owns is bakery so like all throughout this she's like trying to figure out like this series is like 20 books long but all throughout the series she's like trying to figure out who the murderers are how to catch them how to save the people if they're still alive and um also there are like recipes all throughout the books so that's really fun and like they actually work like I've actually tried a few of these and they're really delicious so super cute they can be kind of predictable sometimes but I don't know I just eat them up like candy so check these out um the next one I actually haven't read yet but it's the Union Street Bakery by Mary Ellen Taylor I believe this is set in I couldn't actually like the synopsis doesn't say so I found a chapter that like mentions a town and I think that's where it's set it says um Alexandria Virginia so I think this is a small town vibe book if not um and you've read this then tell me and um but this sounds really good basically we follow um Daisy who now lives in the attic above her family's bakery on Union Street hence the name um and she learns that while she learns the business it doesn't help that as the only adopted daughter her relationship with her sisters has never been easy when an elderly customer dies Daisy is surprised to inherit a journal from the 1850s written by a slave girl named Susie and as she reads Daisy learns more about her family and her own heritage than she ever dreamed haunted by dreams of the young Susie she is compelled to explore the past more deeply so sounds pretty good I think this is a standalone so yeah hopefully I can get to that soon as well it's been on the shelf forever um the next one that I want to talk about is fried green tomatoes by Fanny Flagg I've recently found out she has other books so 
they've been added to the never ending TBR but if you're not aware this ta this book takes place in the town of Whistlestop and we follow um oh what is her name crap why don't I remember her name this is like my favorite movie um, Mrs. Threadgood. We follow A.G. Threadgood and she is in a nursing home visiting a friend and um, this other woman shows up to like visit her husband's aunt but that lady hates her so she winds up like befriending Mrs. Threadgood who's also in the nursing home but like not really a patient. So as they get to know each other A.G. starts telling um, Ruth her like life story and it is beautiful and heartbreaking and takes place in this small town that's like really close by and it is just southern and cooking and small towns and just all that small town drama just all in one book like it's it's just awesome and it's set um like partially in the 1980s but like we flash back to Iggy's life, which I believe is like the 20s on up. Um, so we see like lots of, you know, racial stuff happening and like the KKK gets involved and like she has to like do something about that and there's a murder and like lots of cooking. It's just great. So the next one is, um, Still really good, but like not nearly as dramatic as that. So this is the Readers of Broken Wheel Recommend by Katrina Bavald. Um, this I loved so much. The spine is actually broken in that spot. But in this book we follow Sarah who has traveled all the way from Sweden to meet her pen pal um, who she's been writing to for several years now but when she arrives she finds that Amy has passed away from cancer and um, so like she just spent a lot of her money to get there and like was planning to stay for like quite a while and now she has no means to like go back and she doesn't really want to because she's mourning this friend that she's lost that she hasn't even really met but she's still sad that she's gone and never got to meet her so she realizes that the town is lacking um, a bookstore. They don't have a bookstore. I don't think they even have a library. Um, and these people are just really sad. Like no one ever goes there. Like the businesses are dying. And so she decides to open a bookstore and um, like sell her friend's books because she's staying in Amy's house. And so she decides to slowly start selling her friend's books and like ordering um, some new ones off and on. Uh, for the customers who like genres that she doesn't have so and like the town starts reading and like people start to visit and like enjoy the town slowly but surely but she it's so beautiful because she doesn't make them pay if they can't like she's just like just take it and like just enjoy it it's this is just such a beautiful book um yeah, it's it's sad, but it's very good and obviously like there is also a little bit of a romance like it's certainly not a romance book like it's very much just a contemporary um, adult fiction, but there is a romance and it's definitely hate to love because everyone sees her as the outsider including the guy that she winds up falling for and um, but eventually, you know, they start to like each other so that's kind of cool. But that pretty much sums up this video. So um, I guess if you enjoyed this, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. And um, if you enjoyed this exact like video, then um, I guess tell me in the comments and I will try to find more books about small towns. So I'll see you soon.